There is nothing worse than untapped potential. If you know that you're made for more, this is the place. I know that every successful person I've ever met has one thing in common. They do not let themselves fall victim to their circumstances. They figure out a way to rise above it. So join me on this journey where I help you to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business. If you're feeling stuck and you're needing some practical tools, some hope to get you to that better life, this is definitely the place for you. Welcome to the Antic Podcast. Hey, thank you so much. And thank you for having me in this wonderful podcast. No, goodness. So I would love for you to tell us a little bit about you. You know, what are you most passionate about these days? How are you trying to help people? Oh, absolutely. So as you mentioned, I am an emergency medicine physician. So we're in the middle of COVID. So yes, I'm helping people in that <laughs> respect in that I am still working full time as an ER doc. So apart from that, many hats, I think nowadays we're calling it multi-hyphenated, right? We're all like <laughs> multi-hyphenated. So my other hyphen is that I'm a mom of two. So I have two young boys. I have a three and a five-year-old. And then also I am a wife and I'm also CEO of a company that I started. It's called Your Caring Docs. And I started a very wonderful society to help busy women put, especially professional women like us, yeah. to put our health and wellness first for at least two hours a month. My mantra is there are 730 hours in a month. We can dedicate at least two of those hours to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I think that, you know, making it a priority is Absolutely. something that seems so common sense, but it's really, really hard for many of us, especially as you said, professional women who are trying to wear all of the hats, all of the hyphens yes. <laughs> that you mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> and so tell me a little bit about what made you so passionate about this particular mission that you're on. Absolutely. So as we got more and more into the pandemic, I started looking at my colleagues and all my friends and, you know, you start with your women friends and you're looking around and I'm noticing that there's this change that's happening to all of us. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we aren't really able to exercise as much as we used to. We're not really, you know, we weren't able to go out, especially the first half of the pandemic, right? Everyone's right. on lockdown. We weren't socializing as much other than just through Zoom or video right? We're yeah. stressed. And so there was an increase in stress eating and increase in stress drinking, <laughs> you know, and yeah. decrease in physical activity. And when we really thought about it, we're like, well, we're really under this. We know better, but it was still so hard to do better. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then in addition to that, like our health and our wellness is so important to us. It's so important that we end up knowing that I'm the glue that holds my family together. I'm the glue that holds my, you know, life together. So in order yeah. for me to really be the best that I can be for others, I need to yeah. really put myself first. So that's when I got into saying, like, how can I really help our women yeah. think and understand how important it is to put themselves first? And I said, well, why not just start like pushing and just letting them know? And that's when I built the society to really help women to support yeah. each other in a way mm -hmm. that, you know, you can put your health and wellness first without feeling guilty. Cause that's like the biggest thing that like prevents yes. us. Right. We're like, well, I have this beautiful family and I know I need to go and do this, but my, mm -hmm. this asked me to do that. And so I'm yes. going to put myself and what I want to do last. I'm going to do it after I finish doing this for everyone else. And it's like, right. Well, we don't have to feel guilty. Trust me. The three of yeah. us will be fine. <laughs> like, you know. Absolutely. And, and I love, you know, what you said about how you observed the people around you that were going through this, but I'm going to ask you, Absolutely. um, because I want to know if it's just me, mm -hmm. I, you know, as you know, we've tatted and, and you know that I work in anesthesia. So mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of the, the craziness as well. The pandemic has been really hard on me. In fact, I did a podcast episode in the middle of it mm -hmm. 
that I just talked about what it was like to be, you know, um, in healthcare during this crazy time. And I also did one a little bit later that talked about how I was so stinking stuck. And I, here I was the host of the Untuck podcast Mm -hmm. and I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed about having to admit it, but I was really stuck. Mm -hmm. And so I want to know, like, can you relate to any of that? Do you know, is it just you? (laughs) Like, Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this is not the I'm so much better than you and I'm going to fix <laughs> you so that you can be as great as I am podcast. This is the we're all stuck and we're getting unstuck together. So this is a way for us to really help each other and pull each other out. And that was the point of what, you know, I am trying to do because I recognize this within myself, you know, right before the pandemic hit. Um, there are a couple of things that I had lined up and I was so, so, so excited. I mean, <laughs> like, all right, number one, we bought tickets for the whole family to go to Jamaica. I mean, my sons, and I bought them outfits and it was just like, <laughs> oh, you know, now you're going to be, well, I think my oldest was three and the other one was one and a half. And I'm like, oh these cute little outfits we're going to be going to Jamaica and the beach and then you know I had also you know I was outdoor exercising we had a coach my husband and I and with, in the February the month yeah. before we locked down I ran a 5k and I have my beautiful runner shirt to say the Houston rodeo run because you know you know I'm in Houston Texas for anyone yeah and I mean life was just like everything was seemed at that point like grand and then the week before we were set to go to jamaica you know you you, you had this little sprinkling of information coming from yeah. abroad okay yeah you know things are about to change and you're like okay okay after <laughs> after i get things right we're starting to talk about put it how did i try to think that the pandemic was going to be for me <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right exactly right like okay and the week before boom lockdown yeah gets you know emails from the hospital like hey the first couple emails like the couple weeks before was, hey if you guys are thinking about going away just you know make sure that you do such and such and then the email started to be like mm, you know maybe it's not a good idea for you guys to go away and then the email the right like the week that i was supposed to be like hey if you leave yeah. you're not gonna be able to come back and you're gonna have to quarantine in their country on your <laughs> you're just like whoa, whoa. yeah yeah, things, things, things escalated. Escalated. Really like, like, I think it was that yeah. commercial that said life comes at you fast. Like one of those, I don't know, like those candy yeah. commercials. It was just like life came at us very fast. Right. right. You know, and uh, all the plans just went out of the way. So as much as we're professionals and, you know, we have been taught to deal with circumstances, this was totally different. None of us have been taught to deal with a pandemic. We can deal with stress levels in acute bursts, but a Mm -hmm. continuous stress level where everyone's like, I've never seen this before. I don't know what to do. And we're like, okay. So yes, it changed me. I can see like in my colleagues, the stress level was going higher. My stress level was starting to go up. You know, I was panicking in some respects, like, okay. um, Right, right. You know, like I have this kid who had a respiratory infection. It was in a hospital like five months ago. Now I'm having to rush forward to into the pandemic to take care of people with a virus that no one knows about. Everyone's trying right. to figure out, you know, how do we manage it? We think it's right. a respiratory virus. How, you know, do you have the, enough protective, this and that? So the stress level went up. So yeah. I could figure out ways how to manage that. And yeah. one of the ways that I did to become unstuck <laughs> was really yeah. going out and interacting through different mediums. Like I was never one to talk to people through Zoom and get to know others through Zoom. Yeah. But now I'm doing this on a regular basis and I'm like, oh, this is great. Hey, Michelle, yeah. How are you? yeah, we'll absolutely yeah. do a podcast. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to really tap into this part of you that was It was literally an untapped part that you might not even have known. There are a lot of people that learned so much about themselves in this process, right? And they're able to help to manage 
and yeah. to deal with the stress. And then there's some people that just weren't able to. And so I feel like our goal as humankind, or even especially us as women, is if we figure mm-hmm. something out, why don't we help those who aren't really there Oh my gosh, 100%. And to pull them out, you 100%. know what I mean? And, and that's yeah, and, the, the mantra right now. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think that what's interesting that you, what you said was that at the beginning of the pandemic, things were really heightened stress-wise, right? But then now we're at, as, as we're recording this as of right now, we're at the pandemic for almost the two-year mark. Mm-hmm. And I find that we're just as stressed now, but in a different way. Now we have a staffing shortage. Now we have, you know, um, just tired. We're just tired. And I'm finding that I've personally and around me have just lost joy. And my word for 2022 is fun Fun. because I recognize that I was so just really engulfing myself in all of the stress Mm -hmm. from the schools being closed. And now I have to find daycare and, you know, blah, blah, it's quarantined here. And, and, or even the wrong wave, a wave has a different meaning now. Like before it was the beach, it was fun. It was surfing. Now we hear wave and we're like, Oh, that's in, you know, and that was going to bring me, you know, to my next thing. Mm -hmm. And if you just said segmented that perfectly, so I was at the beach actually last July, which is my favorite place in the world to go. And I'm like, I'm going, I'm going, let's do this. We're going to be outside. But this is what's funny. I've never told this story on the podcast. But I was out. I, we had gotten um, these little floaty devices from like the Dollar General or whatever. And so I'm out there and I just was floating along just fine, just fine. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize <laughs> that the lifeguard was whistling at me. <laughs> Because I had floated so far out and there were riptides oh, no. and I, and I got off my floaty and I'm like, oh crap, I can't touch the bottom. Like I am, I'm further out than I realized. And I think that that can happen with self-care that can happen with the pandemic in the sense that we don't even know that we have gone out as far as we have mm-hmm. until all of a sudden it's like an emergency and we have a lifeguard like running at us. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. Well, it was crazy. I think that but, but I think there are a couple things that I think that we can, well, like, like I think sometimes we like to do, unpack what just happened. I think yeah. you finally got to that relaxed state. You yes. were just so relaxed because you were yeah. lying on your back, looking up at this beautiful yeah. sky that everything, I'm pretty sure for a moment, you forgot that we were in a pandemic. Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. And I, and I think that like when we, we don't recognize the stress that we're in yes. until it's in over our heads. Absolutely. I think that it's such a gradual thing that Absolutely. it just kind of sneaks up on us sometimes. Yes. And I think that even before the pandemic, one of the things that I personally was guilty of, Tamara, is not taking care of myself even before the pandemic, mm-hmm. because I found that um, one of the things that has literally changed my life, and this is going to sound like the corniest thing ever, but about five years ago, I started washing my face. <laughs> like, like, okay, Lachelle, good job, right? <laughs> but, but the reality is, is that whatever, you know, shampoo happened to fall on my face in the shower was good enough for me. Mm-hmm. And it was literally that when I dissect that back... I can honestly say, sadly enough, that I chose to not give myself the time mm-hmm. or the money to take care of myself. It was the last thing on my list mm-hmm. for me to spend the time to take care of my skin and to spend the money on myself. Everything went to my family. Mm-hmm. And so I think that when I started to to put on my big girl skincare, mm-hmm. right, I started to see a change in the inside of Lachelle right. because all of a sudden I was like, okay, girlfriend, you are worthy of this. Don't waste it. You better dang well use the rest of that bottle. <laughs> right. But and, how, and but, how did you look at yourself? Like I yeah, am. I mean, it was, gorgeous. I carried myself differently. Absolutely. I totally carried myself differently and had very little to do with the fact that I was, you know, washing my face and, and using specific skincare. It had everything to do with the fact that I made the decision exactly. that I was worthy enough to spend the time and money on myself. Absolutely. And I can't tell you guys like how something so small mm-hmm. completely changed the way that I looked at myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're so right. This is something that sneaks up on us. Like time. Mm-hmm goes by, 
it's okay. You know, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. I can just yep. this. It's not really that. You know, it, it happens with so many aspects of our lives, right? It mm-hmm. happens with um, our self care and just little things that makes us happy. Because even as I thought about this, I've been like, you know, in the in the health and wellness space and the self care space, yeah. and I'm like, alrighty. And I've been asking questions, and I'm like, what is it that makes you happy, or what automatically calms you down? And yeah. then I've been hearing people saying like, oh, you know, playing the piano. And I'm like, well, I can't play the piano, so it'll just be banging noise. Okay, and then they're like dancing and music, and I'm like, that is so true. Like music yeah. is something so simple, right? It, but it really yes. will bring you joy. So why not just have a quick dance party so i'm like all right so that's oh my, my goal for tonight by the way i'm having a dance party at home loud music yes. and just dancing that's my self-care but it's <laughs> but, but oh it's so <laughs> i i i love that i love that so much and this is like i love to dance i love to dance yes. and so i think that that's what i'm gonna have to do too so you guys what i think we're gonna do is we're gonna get into the more of tamara's you know, really amazing tips on how we can spend that two hours. She mentioned that she really wants us to use two hours of our time every single month to start to pour into ourselves so that we can eventually then take better care of the people around us. But first, I'm going to tell you all about something that I've been working on. I cannot wait to give you all of the details. So hold tight. I'm going to tell you all about it. And then we're going to get back and listen to more of these amazing tips on how we can take care of ourselves. Okay, you guys, I am so excited because, you know, I think we should just start out the second half of this podcast with the dance party, obviously, oh, yeah. but. Oh, yeah. Dance party <laughs> it is. And, you know, there are so many great ways to take care of yourself. And everyone always thinks like, okay, self-care, self-care. Already, I need to book and go to the spa. That's self-care. Oh, I need to. No, self-care is really anything that makes you Put yourself and your you as a priority. So anything that brings you back to that joyous state and it automatically can break this cycle, this stress cycle that's within us, that's self-care, right? So if we really think about it, like for me, dance party it is. You guys are all invited virtually to my dance party. (laughs) I love it. Right? But then like it could be really just something like do you – find pleasure in for some people it might be painting their nails like you know is it pleasure so do you find pleasure in painting your nails yourself or do you find pleasure in getting it done by someone else Mm -hmm. that's self-care right do you find pleasure Mm -hmm. in watching a movie that really just has you crying or is it that action flick like for me it's 007 (laughs) it might be the notebook (laughs) I love it. I don't even want to. My daughter and I are watching something right now that is, um, yeah, it's like a supernatural something. It's really kind of fun. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, like, that's we just a, like to like ima- put our imagination to work, absolutely. right? Absolutely. And I am pretty sure that if we were to even tap into your brain and just look at how calm and relaxed you were at that point in time, that's your yes. self care, right? But we're women. There are things that we need to do in order to pour into ourselves to make sure that we are here for our family. And I'm a doctor, so I'm just going to put it out there. Our health is important too, right? So if you are making your appointment for everyone else in the family, but you didn't make your checkup appointment, your checkup appointment is your self-care. For us women, that mammogram, right? We're making sure that our husband's prostates are okay, but are we making sure that our tatas are good? We want it. <laughs> it is part of our care. It is part, because what yeah. we said, we're the glue that holds our family together. And that's usually what we say in order to not take care of ourselves. But we need to use that and we're the glue that holds our family together. And that is why it's so important. Yes. A hundred percent. You know, one of the things that um, one of my friends, Kathy, actually told me to do, because she knows that I love the ocean so much, mm-hmm. is my happy place. Someday I'm going to have a house in the ocean. There we go. So I'm going to say that we, out We have you. another yeah. dance party at the ocean coming up, but go ahead. Oh, that sounds good. You're totally <laughs> invited. So, um, but she's like, Lachelle, all you need to do is go and pull up on your Amazon music, the o- sounds of the ocean for two minutes on your break. Just close your eyes. And And just imagine that you're there. And you know what? It totally worked. It totally worked. 
because we're really using the brain chemistry. So now what your friend really just did was just highlight this wonderful part of our brain. So our brains at times cannot tell the difference between things that we make up and tell it or things yes. that are direct realities. So why yes. don't we use that to our advantage? And that's how it is when we felt so confident. Like you're still the same person, whether you washed your face before or not, but you felt so much better. And that yes. because your brain's like, oh, something's different. The thing that's yeah. different is what we told ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now this is different. When we step into that room, everyone's looking like, wow, you know, wow. It looks like this person is stepping in so much different. Like, why do they have so much self-confidence? Because we told ourselves that. And so it's yes. so important. And one of the things that is absolutely important for us to not do is to bully ourselves. Mm, because yes. the same thing applies, right? Like, yes. hey, yes. oh, I'm so gorgeous versus, hey, oh my God, I can't believe there's an extra role right here. Your yeah. body's saying, oh, wow, there are bad things going on. Let's continue down this negative cycle. You know, and it's just, and so we have that ability to really use our brain to our advantage when it comes to self-care, to feeling great, to being great, you know, just yeah. do it. Like Nike says. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that so often as women, especially, we want to be there for each other. Like if I find out that one of my friends is having a really hard day, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what can I do for you? Absolutely. I want to, I want to be part of it. Or if they had a bad day yesterday, I'm like, oh my goodness, why didn't you tell me? I could have been there, you know, but yet like, why do we not allow other people the See. joy to be able to help us on our bad days? Or why do not why don't we let ourselves be our own best friend in that moment yes. instead of putting ourselves down? Yes. And, and that's, such a, that's a great point. And that's something that it really requires a little bit of work, but it's so possible. You yeah. really recognize on a regular basis, our brains, they're trying to protect us, right? Oh yeah. my gosh, something bad's about to happen. Why are you trying to do this new thing? Suppose it doesn't mm -hmm. work out. But one of yeah. the part of like really helping is for us to really recognize and thank her. Oh, I'm so glad that you, you know, trying to protect me, but mm -hmm. I know that this will be so great for me, right? Like self-care, yes. like, oh my gosh, I would love to try this new blah, blah, blah. Why are yeah. you going to try that new thing? Maybe I'll like, but you might not like it. That's your brain, but maybe I will. Yeah. That'll become now a new part of my self-care routine, right? So yeah. it's just, it's really for us to acknowledge our brain for trying to protect us and thank mm -hmm. her. I'm saying her because we're females here. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a male yeah. listening to this, you'll be thanking him or her. <laughs> you, you know, you Don't refer. <laughs> exactly. But you thank <laughs> them and then you proceed, you know. And right. so that's also a, such a great important aspect of, of self-care. It's really recognizing mm -hmm when you are giving yourself negative thoughts and if you mm -hmm. really take a step because that's something that i myself had to do and this is where i got all excited right <laughs> like oh yeah this is something that i recognized within myself a couple years ago that you know i'd get up and i'd look in the mirror and i'm thinking like oh you know things are changing yeah things are supposed to change <laughs> that's life but I just had like <laughs> negative views, negative views. And then I started to take mm -hmm. a toll and I'm like, wow, why am I always saying negative things to myself? Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say these yeah. things to you. You know, if you came right. out and you said like, oh, I'm not feeling great. I'm like, you know, oh, I don't think I look great in that. I'd find a way to let you know, like, oh no, you actually do look good in it. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm not going right. to tell you you're horrible. Oh my God. <laughs> right. You know, but these are yeah. things we say yeah. to ourselves. So once I started recognizing it, I broke that cycle and I would stop it immediately. And the more you do it, the earlier you can stop the negative thought and then you yeah. just switch your mind to more. I, I think that it's so brilliant the way that you, you're saying this, because what you're saying is, is that the first step to self-care is to recognize the way that you're talking to yourself. Absolutely. And when you can recognize it, you can start stopping the cycle, which is going to allow you to feel more worthy of spending the time, the money saying yes to the girlfriends who are inviting you out for the movies yes. instead of staying at home with the family, cooking them supper, you know, All the time. Pizza and head to the town. Right? Absolutely. Because when you do that, I trust you get back 
And when you're making yeah. that meal for that family, you are feeling so great. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, we all have that point where we step away from whatever it is, from all the, that we love and who we love to hang out with the other people that we love. And then mm-hmm. there's a certain point in time when you start missing those people for first set, yes. right? So when you yes. get back, isn't the love even better? The hugs, yes. Yes. you know, are better. The time with the children and your loved one is better. And that's mm-hmm. why self-care is so important because you come back yes. and you're increase exponentially yes. the love that you're putting out to their family or the, those who you love. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. You're so right. And I think that it all comes down to, you know, when you love people around you enough, then you have to love yourself enough to show them, Absolutely. but you can't show them until you take care of yourself. Absolutely. Like last night I got home from the operating room late and I was hangry. Yes. <laughs> I was hungry and I was really crabby and I recognized it. And I was like, okay, I just need to get some food in me. Mm-hmm. And, and my husband was kind enough to say, okay, yep. Like, why don't you take the oven first? Mm-hmm. Like, it's all good. And then when he allowed me to, to take the time to feed myself, I was like, I was a way better mom and wife. Yes. And so I think that when we consider, you know, it's okay. Cause I could have easily just said, nope, it's all right. You go ahead and use it. And then I would have just been a crabby uh, for the next uh, half hour. Uh. <laughs> if I got to eat. Yes, you know? yes. And then you'll get the family starts giving the look like, oh, stay with the mom. But you don't want that. You want that, <laughs> like, you know, oh, the hugs and the, oh, yes. Yeah. But it, it just required for you to do a couple things, and which was so important, is that you recognize that. And then you, you provided the boundaries to your family. Like, hey, mm-hmm. I just need a little time to myself to get myself back together. And then you were able to pour yeah. so much more into them. You know, yes. it's, and that's why Absolutely. all of this is so important. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, one other thing that we haven't had a chance to talk about is the fact that we're modeling better for our kids, yes. right? Because I think that if we model continuous self-sacrifice, mm-hmm. we're showing our children that they're not supposed to take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Therefore, we are enabling another generation of shaming, Absolutely. right? And so it's really important for us to to take that time and and to model it for them. And I think for me, you know, I have, you have two boys and so there's, it probably looks a little different. I have one boy and one girl, mm-hmm. but my daughter and I, like we do face masks together or we'll paint our nails together. Mm-hmm. And I think that when I can take my self care and include her in mm-hmm. it, I'm trying to teach her at an early age that that's just part of what we do. And I'm hoping for better for her Then it. It's not going to be quite as a big of a struggle as it was for me. Absolutely. So. And I think that that's so, that's such a great point that you're making because both of us were in the medical field. And that's one of the things, as much as you would think, like that would be the field to tell you, to have you the first in line to take care of yourself. <laughs> it's actually yeah. sometimes quite the opposite. It's the opposite. Yes. Yeah. In that we are trained in this medical field to really sacrifice self above all, yes, you know, in order to be considered the best and you can fill in the blank, you know? So we train and we're training hours and hours and hours. We really do not eat that well, or we're stuffing food. We never took, we never take that time to get a break to really eat. And you're sick, but you come to work. You're not feeling well, you're coming to work, everything. Like we don't really get that opportunity to take that time yeah. off. So yeah. for us, even putting and thinking about self-care, for others, they might yeah. be like, well, why are they talking about this? No, this is a big feat for those of us who are in healthcare. Yeah. You know, it is. It's so it's and it's so important, as we mentioned, that we're modeling for those. Yeah, who we're a- bringing absolutely. Up so that they yeah. can be better and they can know. Absolutely. That this is normal. And I think, too, like we have to just remember that whatever whatever profession you're in, mm-hmm. like I find that this is a theme that I have over and over again. There's so many anesthesia colleagues of mine that get kidney stones because we just don't go to the bathroom enough yeah. <laughs> because someone has to come into the operating room and get us out. Right. Yes. Or surgeons. Same. And so I think that um, that kind of mentality has, has come with me. And so when I have my days off and I'm and I'm entrepreneur for the day, mm-hmm. I will literally look up and I'll realize that I haven't had anything to eat yet. Yes. 
And I think that we have to give ourselves the permission, no matter what it is that you do, to to take care of yourself. Because I know that if I would have taken the time to eat instead of shoving things down before my next interview or whatever, mm -hmm. then my brain is going to fire a little bit better. I'm going to have more creativity. Absolutely. I'm going to be way more productive if I take the mm -hmm. time to take care of myself versus just running on, on empty constantly. And then my family comes home and I'm giving them my slappy leftovers. And that's not a way to live, right? That's just surviving. That is, that is absolutely right. And that's something that's so vital for us to recognize within ourselves. So I implore anyone who is listening to this podcast or even watching, I would love for you to take time for the next 48 hours. And each time you're sitting at your meal, sit and think about what emotions you're having during that time. Are you mm. sitting and enjoying the meal in a stress-free environment? And I don't mean that it has to be like the environment around you, but within yourself. And the reason yeah. why I am really giving you guys this challenge is because I recognized this within myself just a few yeah. weeks ago that every meal that I eat is under a stress burden. Like we just talked about, like 30 minutes, like, okay, well, I need to hurry to eat so I can get the boys ready for bed, or I have to hurry mm -hmm. because it's in between patients. And I'm like, wait a minute, every meal? So yeah. now I recognize and I break that stress cycle. You know, whenever I'm eating and I feel that tension, I said, wait a minute, this is my relaxation time. There's no need for yes. me to be tense. Let me sit mm -hmm. and enjoy this meal. And it's just so much better. And, and these are just techniques that we're really like, putting out to you for you to, and information for you to just think because we're constantly yeah. under a stress to, well, 2.0, COVID. but there are other ways for us to totally break that. And if we just recognize it, right. So there are two big things that we've, we've talked about before. One is recognizing the negative talk that we've said to each other. You can knock that out. And then two, now you can think about while you're eating, like, am I stressing myself out while I'm supposed to just be relaxing and eating with my family? That is amazing. And I, we, I wish that we could just keep talking all day long, maybe throw in some music and have a dance party right? in it. But unfortunately we have to get going soon. So is there anything else that you have really um, on your heart to share with us before we pop off the call? Absolutely. So there's this wonderful book out about like, you know, the stress cycle and different ways to break the stress cycle. So it's all about the fact that we really constantly move from one phase of stress to another. We're never completely done. However, it's great for you to be able to break that one cycle in order for you to be able to handle the next one, right? So okay. different wonderful ways to do that. Like one is dancing. <laughs> well, movement, but my form is dancing, but you might want to <laughs> use exercises yours. <laughs> creativity using your hands and guess what the beautiful one hugging a great mm -hmm. big hug from a loved one for at least 20 seconds because if you okay. think about those tap hugs 20 seconds usually melts you can feel your heart rate goes down everything yeah. is just so much better and also breathing exercising you know those are all wonderful ways so if you're finding yourself stressed out because we are in the pressure cooker. So just tap into some of these wonderful ways and don't forget ladies to put yourself first. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. And you guys, I'm going to make sure that you have all of the ways to get a hold of Dr. Bach. Oh, goodness sakes. I'm going to tell you all the ways to get a hold of Dr. Beckford um, in the show notes so that you can have all of the ways to start taking care of yourself and tell me again, your community and, and what it is and how you're trying to serve people. Absolutely. So we have a wonderful podcast. It's called our docs who cares where we have wonderful, great information for some doctors and we have the, your caring society. So the, your caring society is a society to help our busy professional women put their health and wellness First, for at least two hours a month, will be available. It is a society. You can go on to yourcaringdocs.com slash society. That's U-R-C-A-R-I-N-G-D-O-C-S dot com slash society. And you'll be able to really tap into all the wonderful things that we have for you. 
Oh my goodness. I love it. And then before we pop off the call, I would love for you to think of a question mm -hmm. that you would like to pose to our audience. That's going to help move them from where they are to where they want to be. So what would you ask them to consider that's going to kind of get their brains in action? All right. So wonderful thing to, for you to consider is how can I, within the next 48 hours, relieve my stress? We've given you the answers, which is this. <laughs> this is that pop quiz that your, that your teacher is like, I already gave you the answers. Yes. <laughs> but how can I release some of my stress within the next 48 hours? We look forward to seeing those answers too, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And you guys, thanks for listening. And I hope that you can learn to take care of yourself because there are people who are counting on you as your best self. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Untucked Podcast. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. And don't forget to check out the show notes if you want to get into my private club, The Better Club, to be able to learn better ways to be better, do better, and have better. So until next time, keep showing up. Let's get unstuck together. Have a great day.